Hello, it's Regina. Welcome back to my haunted library. Happy Easter. Lily says hello. I hope that everyone is having a beautiful Easter Sunday, no matter what they're, um, what they worship, and if, or if not at all. I hope that it's a, you're having a beautiful day. Okay, so I wanted to do a quick um, tag video. I discovered that I was tagged in a couple videos, and I'll upload those during the week. But I wanted to get this one done because it's kind of old and I didn't notice that I was tagged. So I want to thank uh, Book Invasion for tagging me. So I wanted to do this, um, this tag. This is the over 30 book tag. How did you know? Most of the booktubers are so young that um, it's kind of like being over 30, which I consider very young. Maybe there should be an over 50 uh, book tag and, and not making any assumptions, but maybe Steve Donahue and I can uh, start a little club. Anyway, let's uh, let's get on to the uh, tag. Let's sit back and go through it. Uh, name one of your favorite books that features a protagonist who is 30 years or older. I was thinking about like older and uh, maybe like aging. So I pulled a uh, Cold Heart Canyon by Clive Barker off my shelf because in this book, the protagonist, and it, it's a very involved book. That's just one of my favorite Barker novels. And it's kind of, and look how cute he is in the picture. This is about an actor who uh, gets a facelift to try to make himself look younger and it goes terribly wrong. This um, actor hides out in this old Hollywood mansion in Cold Heart Canyon and it is part of an old, it's kind of like Sunset Boulevard where there's this old um, Hollywood actress named uh, uh, Katya. She was Romanian from the 1920s uh, silent era and she was just a real freak. It's like Sunset Boulevard meets Hellraiser. Number two, name a book that represents you when you were younger. Well, I have to say The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I think I've outgrown <laughs> The Secret History, but at the time that the book came out, that really kind of represented like my friend group in college. We came after this uh, kind of, um, you know, hippie generation and we wanted nothing to do with activism or anything like that. We were complete pleasure seeking hedonist decadence. So, so the secret history kind of like that sort of was like my youthful book and um, yeah, that <laughs> gone with the wind. <laughs> Anyway, next, uh, name a book that represents where you are in your life now. Uh, I pulled this off my shelf. This is Robert Louis Stevenson, uh, Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Beautiful Eastern Press copy. Now, the reason I picked this is I feel like um, I've just been like exploring this idea of the divided self, not just for my own life, but just in, you know, exploring this in literature and art and poetry and psychology and even religion in a way. So... I always come back to this, this idea and I always come back to this book. So I feel like this is a classic for a reason. And because I just read um, Gothic by Richard Davenport Hines and he gets into a lot of the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde and how it, it works as a sort of a cultural uh, viewpoint in psychology and religion and, and other things. So it's like, yeah, I can relate. The, the doubling, uh, I've, I've written books about this, where I've used this theme. I did film project, which I might talk about sometime, um, where I explore this theme of, of the double, you know, like the two sides of people, the evil twin, if you want to go that, you know, literal with it. But yeah, this is something I, I'm very interested in and it, it still intrigues me because it's still like such a great mystery. Okay, number four. Name a book that represents something that has never changed about you. Well, I pulled this off my shelf. This is uh, Alice in Wonderland and uh, by Lewis Carroll, of course. What can I say? I love Alice in Wonderland. I've always, I loved it as a child. I love surrealism. It's, I still love it. I still read it every couple of years. I've, I've uh, done play versions of this. I'm just obsessed in a way with Alice in Wonderland and that's never gonna change. Number five, name one of your favorite classics. Well, that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. And um, I just reread this this year. Beautiful Eastern Press hardback copy of it. Any book that makes me sob, I gotta love. 
and this did last time. It does every time. It's just the most beautiful book. But I think it's one of, it's probably the most beautiful woman's story I've ever read. Written by a woman a very long time ago, but it's also, it gets into that soul of, of a woman. And um, in, in a way that not a lot of books do. So, I mean, you know, how can I resist? So, uh, number six. Name a book you uh, would like to read that was published in the year you were born. Well, uh, that is giving a little bit too much away. So I will do the decade that I was born and I chose Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin. To every aspiring writer out there, especially if you're writing like horror or thriller, read Ira Levin, read Kiss Before Dying, read Rosemary's Baby, read Stepford Wives. They're all really short, uh, concise, immaculately written and plotted books. I highly recommend them. They're great. So that's my over 30 book tag. I don't want to tag anyone because, um, well, I'll tag Lily. She's definitely over 30 in dog years, but, uh, I, I don't want to make any assumptions about people's ages, but if you are over 30 and you want to do this tag, feel free to do it. Thanks again to book invasion for tagging me and have a lovely Easter Sunday. I'll see you soon in my haunted library. Bye.